Hello again, it's Professor Hendricks, and this time I'd like to talk to you about Python lists. Now lists in Python are probably one of the most important composite data types, by which I mean they can be composed of other basic data types such as ints and strings, as well as other composite data types like you can have lists of lists, lists of tuples, and I'll come back to that later on, but for now I want to define some simple lists and get everyone started with the list as a data type in Python. So if I enter the Python terminal, I can define a list using two square brackets like so, or I can use the list function. So I can define a function like this, and I can see that it's represented by this pair of square brackets. Now the list function can be used to both create an instance of the list data type as well as convert to the list data type. Speaking of which, I can confirm that if I type L, I can see that it is a list data type as expected. Now to add elements to my list, I can use the append method. Now append, as far as I know, is a method that's unique to lists, and the other composite data types that we'll talk about do not use this approach. And so I can append, for example, if I wanted to create a list of, of ints, maybe I want to create a list of the odd ints like this, I can do so and explicitly define element by element and get my list L. I can also define a list, for example, a list L2 by explicitly defining elements within a pair of square brackets like so, and I can confirm that I've created now a list of some even ints. And I can also concatenate two lists together. So, for example, if I want to do L equals L plus L2, so what I'm doing is I'm storing to be the new variable L, the, the concatenation of the original list L and this new list L2 that I've created. And I can see that it's now the combination of those two lists concatenated together. Now, append is the built-in method associated with lists, but there are other uh, methods that are specifically associated with list objects. And one of them is sort. And sort is really important. As you can imagine, you probably want to sort numbers and sort strings and maybe sort strings by their length and do all sorts of things like that. So let's see some of those examples. So in this case, if I do l.sort, it will just simply sort those numbers in numerical order. If I want to sort in reverse order, I have to do reverse equals true. And I can sort those, those ints in reverse order. Now I can also append to my list floating points. So if I put 3.14, for example, and I have my new list, I can sort that as well. So, whoops, I can sort that as well, and I can see that it sorted the 3.14 um, along with the other ones perfectly fine. And that is true of numeric data types, ints and floats, combined into one list. But if I were to, for example, append to that, that list, say for example, the letter A, and attempted to sort that, I would get an error because it doesn't know how to combine string and int using the less than sign or how to compare them using the less than sign, which is what it's ultimately using for sorting. So now we've seen two methods that are specifically associated with lists, append and sort. Here's another one, pop. So I can pop off that particular last element from this list A and get a new list that's going to be one shorter than the previous. I think I also mentioned before that len, which we used in the context of strings to define the length of the string, that can also be used in the context of lists. And that's part of the reason why len is a function and not a built-in method specifically associated with lists. And furthermore, while we're on the subject of pop, I can pop a variable in this case and then store it to be a new variable, like a variable x, and now x has that, that previous last value, and then l is now one element shorter. Now, of course, you can sort strings together when it's just strings. You just can't sort them when they're combined with other data types like ints and floats. So here I have to find a list l, and it is composed of short DNA sequences, or strings in this case, and I can sort those perfectly fine. Now the default behavior when you're sorting strings is alphabetical order. We can confirm that these are indeed sorted alphabetically. If I want to sort by length, I can do something like this, where I define a new key, and for the key I have to give the name of a function, and that should be able to sort 
based upon that perfectly fine. And so what it's doing is it's sorting numerically by the length of the string. So the function name that you give it has to be some function that's defined for all the elements in your list, otherwise it won't work. Now, this seems to work perfectly fine. If I want to sort, for example, by length in descending order, I would do reverse equals true, similar to sorting my numbers in reverse order. Another important feature about lists is that I can access a sublist. So here's my list L, and then I could, for example, append to it a couple more. Let me just append a couple more random DNA sequences, like so. And if I want to access a sublist, so for example, let's say if I want to access these three elements right here, I can do this very similar to the way that you can access substrings by specifying the indices using a start and end. And so, for example, I can say L of... In this case, this TA substring is of index 0, 1, 2, and this is 2, 3, 4. So if I want to include 2, 3, and 4, I have to actually specify 2, 3, 5, because remember, the end position is not included in my sub list, similar to the way that the end is not included in the substring. So this properly accesses those three elements just fine. And I can also specify, for example, a step size, like a negative step size, as long as I correctly modify my start and end. And this didn't give the, so if I want to get this right here in reverse, which obviously is not what I got there, what I need to do is go 0, 1, 2, 3. I want to start at index 4 and go down to 4, 3, 2. And so I want to basically do something like this and get that sub list of strings in reverse. Now, no discussion of lists would probably be complete without discussion of the range function. Now, the range function is a built-in function into Python, and by default, I have to give it at least one number as input. And if I type this, it doesn't really tell me much. It sort of just tells me what I typed. But it's more telling if I convert it to a list. And as you can see, it produces a list of ints starting at 0 by default, going up to but not including the number that I provided. I can also specify a different start position, say I want to start on position 2, and I can also specify a step size, for example, a step size of 3, giving 2, 5, 8. In other words, starting at 2, going up 2, but not including 10 in increments of step size 3. That, that gives that resulting range of ints specified by the range function. And the range itself, by the way, if I inspect the data type of range, you will find that it is something else entirely. It has its own class called a range, and that's why we need to convert it to a list. And of course, I can assign my list to a variable, and that's perfectly fine um, if I properly put an equal sign. And I can also specify my range in decreasing order. So for example, if I go 10 to, to 1 in increments of negative 3, I can get that uh, range in decreasing order just fine. A couple other things that I might add about lists is I can use extend. So if I had a second list, L2, which was like another list of... Uh, so I could, for example, um, concatenate these two together as we saw. I can do L plus L2, but I can also... Doing so doesn't modify L. It just could be used to return a new list, for example. Other list, for example, is now the concatenation of those two. But I could also do list.extend. So in this case, if I wanted to directly add L2 to the original list L, I can do so like so. And it basically, in this case, operates very similar to list concatenation, taking all those elements from the second list and adding them to the first list L. I should also mention a little word of caution. So the list function is a built-in Python function, and so therefore you should never use the word list to refer to a variable. In other words, for example, if I were to use this and I wanted to create a, a list called list and I wanted to append to it some numbers, and it looks like an ordinary list and I can access it like an ordinary list accessed by the index of that element, but if later on I wanted to find a new list using the list function or convert some other data type to a list, I get an error. Because by declaring a variable called list, I've actually overwritten the namespace of list, and that makes that function no longer usable. 
So word of caution, I think that goes for all data types. I would advise against naming any variable the same name as the name of a data type. And lastly, I should also mention that the word list is also the name of an abstract data type, i.e. an idealized mathematical conceptualization of how such an object should behave, or in some cases, a specification of how to implement such an abstract data type. So in Python, the word list refers to the data type that is an implementation of the list abstract data type. Behind the scenes, the list is implemented typically using a linked list or a dynamic array. And I believe that Python uses a, uses a dynamic array behind the scenes. And dynamic arrays are really efficient at reallocating memory when you append to them. And that's a discussion for another time. So until then, this is Professor Hendricks, and I'll see you soon.